why I chose to study science. I think I had my heart set on science since about eighth grade. Um, I always enjoyed studying the natural world and solving logical problems. Um, so I, I guess I went into science just because I enjoy it. Uh, regarding the Bachelor of Science specifically as a degree, um, I got to the end of high school and I didn't really know what area of science I wanted to go into. So I figured I'd choose a course that would let me get a, a feel for all the different areas and figure it out from there. I decided that I wanted to go into medicine pretty late. Um, I think a lot of people in the medical course would tell you some heartwarming story about how they've always wanted to go into medicine or some emotional experience they had that made them realize it was their true calling. But no, I, I definitely didn't have anything like that. Um, I had a physiology professor that I'd meet with semi-regularly just to discuss uh, how my studies are going and pathway options and stuff like that. And just before my final year in the Bachelor of Science, he recommended that I apply for medicine. I was pretty skeptical at the time because I had my heart set on scientific research. Um, but he explained to me that medicine opens doors to both practice and research, um, so it sounded like a, a great way to keep my options open and also potentially get into some very interesting areas of research. Um, so I applied and got in, and I guess somewhere along the way realized I wanted to be a doctor because, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. My majors in undergrad were genetics and physiology, and I almost completed a major in psychology as well. All of them have helped somewhat in medicine, but I think anyone who hits the prerequisites in their undergrad and also studies something semi-related to medicine will be setting themselves up just as well. Um, regarding the prerequisites, uh, for Monash right now it's five level two units off of a list, level two being what you'd normally study at in your second year, but I studied level two units in every year of my undergrad, so I definitely got pretty creative with how I mapped it all out. Um, off that list, I'd recommend one biochemistry unit, one developmental biology unit, two physiology units, and one other unit that just sounds interesting to you. Um, I think that sets a good foundation for what's covered in medicine, uh, and also gives you a, a taste of those areas of study. Uh, regarding going beyond that, like picking majors and all the other units you'll do, um, I think just what I did was I just picked uh, stuff that I thought sounded interesting and then went further with the areas of study that I enjoyed, and I definitely think that's the best way to go about it if you want to get into medicine. It'll definitely be the best way to, to keep your grades up. The MMI, the SJT, and the GAMSAT. Okay, so this is where most of the stress of applying for medicine comes in. Uh, the MMI, or multiple mini interview, uh, is pretty intense, and most med schools require these. Um, I did one for each of Monash University and University of Melbourne. Um, you have to prepare for these. Um, they will ask you questions that you have never considered before, and you need to practice dealing with that. Um, there are question generators online, definitely use them. Uh, I just had people I know uh, read them out to me, pick one at random, and uh, then time me while I was giving my response. Uh, it was especially good if I did this with people that were al also applying for medicine so that we could give each other feedback. The SJT, or Situational Judgment Test, is considerably more straightforward. Uh, download practice papers, or uh, do some online ones, and develop an approach. Um, I googled around for advice on how to approach these questions, and I found quite a bit of good advice, so have a look around. The GAMSAT. Um, it's pretty scary, but it's not as bad as people say it is. Get your hands on practice papers. You might have to pay for a few. Um, do them under timed conditions. Um, develop an approach to logic-based problems. You can look that up on YouTube. Um, there are plenty of guides. Um, have people read your essays and give their opinions on them. If you're still struggling after doing all of this stuff, then you can look into buying products or courses that will help you prepare for the GAMSAT. Um, but do it because you are struggling with a particular area or you know what you want to improve. Don't just do it out of fear that the GAMSAT is some, some terrible uh, exam that 
hurts people because people feel like it is, but it, it's not. Also, don't plan to take it twice. Um, so many people plan to do it twice and use the first one as a, a test run or something. Um, don't. It's it's a massive waste of money and it doesn't work. Um, if you're gonna sit the gamsat, plan to sit it as best you can the first time and then never have to do it again. Um, maybe leave yourself time to sit it again if you have to, but don't plan that from the start. Plan to do it and then never do it again. I only applied for Monash and GEMSAS. GEMSAS being the group that includes the University of Melbourne. I probably should have applied for more places like Sydney and Flinders, but I wasn't incredibly committed to the idea of getting into medicine, uh, and I guess I got a bit lazy. Definitely apply everywhere. That's probably pretty obvious, and most people dead set on medicine would be doing that. But yeah, don't do what I did. Uh, don't half-ass it. Really put your name in absolutely anywhere you'd be willing to go. Um, don't let, there's no reason to limit your opportunities. Of course, the weighted average mark, or WAM, always comes up in this discussion because it's what will get you an interview uh, and then counts for 40% of your application to Monash. Um, it's pretty easy to get hung up comparing yourself to other people in this regard, uh, but don't. Um, I think the WAM is a terrible indicator, and I honestly think that the biggest component to the WAM is just how much you enjoyed your classes. Um, if you can keep your WAM uh, high enough to get an interview, then it served its purpose, and you don't need a higher WAM than that. Uh, when I applied, the minimum WAM to get an interview was 82, and mine was higher than that, so I got an interview. Um, I think a good score to shoot for is, is mid-80s, because of course the minimum can fluctuate. Um, also, people from a rural background get a pretty, pretty good boost in this regard, so if that's you, definitely look into that. It's called the Dean's Rural List. From my experience, I have three tips for keeping your WAM up. Firstly, and most importantly, study areas that you are really excited to study. Don't just take a class because you think it's something a future med student should take. You will not be doing your grades any favors. Two, um, consider taking a lighter class load, uh, particularly in the later years. Taking three units instead of four is a great way to make sure that your results are a true reflection of what you can do, particularly if you're also focusing on work or extracurriculars at the same time. Uh, and three, um, get involved with clubs and communities on campus. Uh, I surrounded myself with people studying the same areas as myself, and that was definitely a great way to reinforce the content and to make studying more fun. Oh, information. That's a hard one, because it kind of just comes from everywhere. Uh, I think the best source of information is generally just other people trying to get into medicine as well. They're your greatest ally, by the way. Find them and get to know them and work with them. Um, the Monash Science Society and Monash Biological Societies uh, are pretty good for that. Um, other things like uh, Facebook groups for med entry and GAMSAT can also be pretty helpful. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend forums like Paging Doctor and stuff like that. They can get pretty negative and stressful at times, although some people really like them. All right, my three big pieces of advice to finish this off. Uh, firstly, find a mentor in a community. For me, it was Professor Ramesh Rajan and the Monash University Biological Society. Academics whose classes you've enjoyed uh, are a good place to start when it comes to mentors. They're usually willing to meet with students and talk about their, their studies and possible pathways for the future. Uh, clubs and societies are a good place to start looking for communities. Um, they're very easy to get involved with. Just hit up their Facebook page or find them at Orientation Week. If your WAM slash GPA isn't high enough, then you can do honors or a research master's after your undergrad to boost it. If your SJT or interview scores aren't high enough, um, those can really benefit from work experience or volunteering experience, so you can always take some time for that. Um, Monash is a little bit funny in that they limit the number of times you can interview and apply for them, 
but there will always be a medical school that you can apply for and a way to get up to their standards. So it's really always just a matter of time and finding the right way to get there. Finally, and most importantly, don't get caught up taking units because you think they're related to medicine or they set a good foundation for medicine or they're good for a future doctor to know. That's not the point of a Bachelor of Science. The purpose of a Bachelor of Science is to get you into medicine. You will learn everything you need to know about medicine in the medicine course. Uh, I've said this before, but the prerequisites, that's really what you need. Uh, as long as you hit those, you're fine. At minimum, that's five units out of the 24 units you will do in a Bachelor of Science. About 20%. The other 80% of your classes should be classes that you're excited to take. Ones that you read about and you think the assessments sound really fun or the labs sound really interesting. Take those units. Your grades will be much better off, I guarantee it, and you will have so much more fun during your undergrad.